Um, Tony, team news first, first off for the weekend. Um, Carlos played last week for the first time uh, under you. How's he come through? Is he going to be okay, do you think? Yeah, physically he's fine. Uh, emotionally, probably a little scarred. Uh, he didn't have his strongest uh, of games. It was his return game. Um, unfortunately, it was his 150th. Um, he probably would have liked to a, a better performance. But having said that, you know, I understand. Um, difficult one to get uh, Carlos back into shape without throwing him out there. Um, it, with his injury that he's had in our reserve grade plan on artificial turf, it's hard to bring him back through a, a reserve grade process. So it was pretty much, you know, if we didn't throw him in, we're not going to have him soon or, or we're not going to have him back at his best. So he's cool with that. And I understand and, you know, I, I feel for him a little bit because he wanted to play better, um, as did a number of our players. It wasn't just um, Carlos, but physically he's come through good. Um, mentally, he knows he'll be better next time for that run out, yes. What about any change? Well, you're going to have to make one, aren't you? Because uh, Lizzie Sow is uh, Flinging, yeah, suspended. He, yeah, he's suspended. Yeah, there, there's a couple of changes. Um, not too much. I'm not making too many. Um, it was a, wasn't a great start to the match um, last week by, a, by any stretch of the imagination. And, um, but after that, there was some, some areas of improvement. And, you know, considering we were 16-0 down, before we started to swing some punches ourselves and and build our way back into the game, there were some positives about it, and a, you know a bit of urgency at times too, particularly in defence when we were down to twelve. Um, we've got to get that urgency when we've got thirteen, and um, you know there was there's some harsh lessons learnt again uh, this week, but discipline was an issue, um, number of penalties given away. You know, sin bins, taking opportunities. We created a few that we needed to convert. When you're not quite at your best and not quite all on the same page at times, uh, you don't convert them. Um, we're, we're doing our best to rectify some of that uh, through the, our review process, but also just some of our honest discussions and understandings and getting a better understanding of what we expect from one another. And um, so... Yeah, it's been useful, whilst at the same time we're not um, pleased with having to go through the harsh lessons. Is there more time this week being spent in the video room than out on the training pitch? Um, early in the week, yes. Early in the week, yes. Um, most definitely. We had a lengthy one again. Um, players watched the whole game the other day and we all talked about it. And it was good. There was some good stuff come out of it and some... You know, honesty, some embarrassment, and some, you know, blushing faces and, you know, some opinions as well about, you know, how to play in certain situations. It's good, it's good. You get a better understanding of one another. Um, so it was, yeah, very productive. Yes, early in the week. Um, since then, uh, we had plenty of practice. We needed to go and practice, practice, practice. And until we, you know, keep practicing, that's... That's the only way you get confidence in anything, in any walk of life, whatever, whatever you do, you've got to practice it. And um, we're practicing plenty this week. Andre Savelio was saying to us that, you know, what, one of the issues is you know, people doing their own thing. Some of the combinations not coming. They're still getting used to some new players and still getting used to you. How much would you see that as being the situation? Yeah, loads. Loads. I had a, uh, I had a really interesting comment from a player in one of those meetings and you know, not not an overly senior player, but and somebody who's been around the, for a little while, and, and, and it's understandable some of what we've played so far with a new spine. You know, from um, some, so people in crucial positions, half back, full back, um, and and uh, hooker, and a new coach. Wow, they're all pretty crucial people. You know, we know, and the coach asking for some changes in the way that we do things. It's it's not easy to take on, and it's not easy to understand. And coming from different leagues or and different teams in those positions, well, it, 
it takes a little bit of time for us to all get the same understanding and and we're, we're getting closer with it. We're getting closer with it through some discussions. Unfortunately, we're going, you know, having some losses to do that. But, you know, sometimes that's what it takes. And, you know, until you rectify that and have some of those discussions, you know, you're not going to win games. But we're hoping to do that sooner rather than later. Can you draw similarities between here and Warrington of a year ago? They went in there with a new coach and you had a lot of players out of contract, changed a lot of it. You're shrugging your shoulders there. It seems to be a similar story over here. Um, or is that an outsider's perspective? Yeah, no. Uh, hey, listen, I can, I can see some of those similarities. I can. Um, I just think it'll be different. Um, I think each place is different. I see the similarities. Um, you know, Warrington uh, you won their first three games last year. Um, we won two. Um, uh, and before they... I. I don't know what went on in Warrington and I'm not going to make any guesses and I don't really care. Um, they, I don't think we're uh, comparable in, in many respects in terms of I think we're going to get better and better and better as the season goes on. I might be proven wrong and I'm, we might mirror Warrington exactly and, you know, the, the question that you ask may be spot on, but... I just don't see it. Um, you know, I just see enough within these guys and with what they're doing at the moment. Um, but it, I might sit in here in six weeks' time, six months' time, and say, hey, you were right about that question. I just I don't see the comparison at the moment and I, I certainly don't want to go down the track of that being the case. You know, um, whether we've got people off contract or not, um, the people off contract, we won't have as many people off contract um, by the end of the season if people are earning a contract. So, you know, we'll have, I think we've got something like 16 or something still off contract. Well, if we're not doing the job, we'll have 16 people off contract at the end of the year. I think some of those spots will be filled and those, those numbers will be declined once we all start clicking into gear and understanding each other and, and pulling in, in the same direction at the same time. It's not for the will of trying. That's my point. And I think they're trying and they're buying in. It's just, you know, understanding how they fit with each other uh, to make it all happen at the same time. It'll happen. I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident. So you don't think so many of players being out of contract at the end of the season, off contract, is a factor in the way things are going no, at the moment? No, absolutely not. Yeah, no, and probably took me 10 minutes to say that. Um, no, I, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. I, I don't see that as being anything that's inhibited us at the moment. Um, if, if a contract, a player being off contract at the end of the year, at this stage of the year is being distracted by that, they're in the wrong sport and we've got the wrong player. But because, geez, you know, if we're making decisions this early in a season a bit, or people are getting insecure about their financial situation for the future and we that finishes in November, um, they need to take a reality check because this, out in the real world, not many people have got that sort of security and, and know what's going beyond it. You know, contracts are drunk contracts. Um, we're all the time, all of us in professional sport, are working and, and playing for a new one. So uh, get used to it. I don't think it's an issue. So at what stage then, Tony, do you start thinking not just about this season, but about next season and, and the squad for next season? Oh, you're doing that all the time. You know, you're doing that, you're doing that all the time with your juniors, you know, who's coming through that can take spots of people who are there or, you know, have we got those replacements coming through either internally you know, player agents are hovering around. You can walk over to the um, university and bump into a couple of player agents regularly. You know, they're, they're just either here visiting their their players or bump into some other people who make some decisions. You know, it's just so those sort of things are being discussed. It's just an ongoing thing. Um, you know, decisions will be made on each individual as necessary or as the deemed fit. Um, some players will have to 
you know, play throughout the season. They're at different stages of their careers before you make decisions on them. Some of, you know, young in their careers and you might want to take a pun on them. And there's also, you know, different expectations of, of earnings from some of them, you know, and what people are prepared to. So we'll work all that through. But it's an, that's a, just an ongoing. That's, you know, we'll be thinking not only about next year, but what's progressing beyond next year. You know, what, who's coming through in the halfback positions or in the hooking positions in two years' time? Have we got those players here or do we need to go and find them or start to look for them next year for the following year? Yeah, that's just an ongoing. Mm. You've spoken about you know, when everything comes right, the discussions you've had, the <laughs> training uh, that you're having. Mm -hmm. If it comes right this weekend, how much of an impact can this have on your season, given the way Warrington have started? Uh, and what gives you the belief that it can happen this weekend? Oh, we're, we're just going to go give it our best shot. You know, it's, um, none of us are saying, and I'm not saying, we're going over there and we're going to beat Warrington. I'd like us to think that we can, and I'd like to think that any team can beat any team on any given day. You know, when, when they're determined enough and and go out there and perform in the right manner. You know, so far, Warrington haven't been beaten. You know, and they're playing confidently. They're playing with, in good rugby league and they've got some terrific players. I don't think anybody has said, either from them or anybody else, that they're indestructible or they're not beatable. Well, you know, I think every team is, I think, on their day. They've had a great start and they deserve all the accolade, accolades that they've, they've had so far. And I think they're doing a great job. I'm, I'm impressed by them. They're doing well. Um, but, you know, that doesn't mean they won't have their moments. Um, there's been the odd team in Super League throughout the years that haven't had too many stumbles along the way. Only the very odd teams, you know. You're going to have some stumbles. They may have some ups and downs. They may not. They may go through exactly how they're playing now and getting better and better. That's what Daryl will be trying to do with them, get them better and better. And, uh, but uh, maybe, that, maybe they won't. Maybe they'll have their little rough period at some stage. Um, we're going through ours at the moment. I'm confident that we'll come out of it, whether it's this weekend. I'm not sure. It'll happen soon. Um, I'm confident about that. You spent a long time at the club. You won a lot of things while you were over there as well. How, how, how big a place does it still have in your heart, even though it was a few years ago now? Oh, no, good memories, good memories. It's not close to my heart anymore. Um, good memories and some good friends there. Very, um, some good friends. And, you know, the owner, a terrific guy. Uh, and will always remain friends and utmost respect for Simon and, and, and others um, who over there but Simon was a big part of me being there and had a great working relationship with him and uh, always will be fond memories but you know it's not close to my heart anymore um, it's it was when I was working there I gave it heart and soul to it and that's that's what we do as professional coaches you put your heart and soul into the job that you're doing and um, but when it when it's done there you leave leave behind the memories and you hope to leave behind a good culture and you hope to leave behind some you know, prosperous times and some good memories behind, you know, with the people that you worked with and for. And uh, I think I managed to achieve that. Um, yeah, I was there for nine years. It was a long time. I'm proud of my time there. Most of it was enjoyable. <laughs> the odd bits, like any any uh, part of a career, you know, there were certain highlights and a few lowlights too, but uh, mostly good, mostly good, yeah. I know it's one game at a time, but you know what's coming in a week's time, Good Friday. How much would a good performance and even a win do ahead of the derby? And when I say I know it's one game at a time for coaches, for players, you've been around this city for, for long enough to know <laughs> that the derby is being spoken about for weeks in advance. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, it's on many of the locals' minds. Um, yeah, ticket sales and all those sort of things uh, get ramped up. Um, yeah, it's... Um, we haven't turned any attention to it yet, um, and we won't, won't until after this game. You know, Warrington's the most important game of the year so far. Um, then whole KR will turn into the most important one, and 
and uh, the week after it's I think it's Leeds Rhinos or you know, again and uh, is there a club you haven't coached? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I've worked through a few now, but this is I think it's only my fifth. So um, yeah, no. Listen, um, I understand it, and we'll you know we'll talk about whole KR the following week and all the build up to it. I understand what you're saying. Um, people are murmuring about it already, and yeah, would it help us to have a good performance this week? Absolutely, you know. But that's regardless of who we play the week after. It will help us by having a good performance this week. You know, um, if we played really well and and performed really well, it'll be a shot in the arm for us, regardless of what's coming. It's just no dramas. Go out and earn that deal. That's it. Um, you know. We might have 10 off contract at the end of the year. We might have 20 off contract at the end of the year. We might have, you know, three. That'll be up to how we perform and how we, um, once again, you know, the number that I, I threw up there was, wasn't to be exact, um, but the principle of it is, is still the same. Um, go and earn your contract. Go, go grab it if you want it. If you don't, you know, that's, that's fine too. Well, um, some of those boys who are out of contract m may well earn contracts at other places too. That's, you know, I'm, and I'm hoping that they're, they're in demand. I hope that they earn a spot and playing well for us to make an offer and, and then maybe to have other options. That's great. You know, um, but if people are worried about their contracts and that's why they're not playing well, they've got it mixed up. If the, if the um, playing for contracts is holding you back for a contract, you've got to mix up. You've got to play good to earn a contract. So we need to play well. And once that happens, we'll, smart, we'll start to make some decisions. So hmm. Early days then? Yeah, it's early days. Oh, way early days for me and, and my relationship with them and getting to know them and how they deal with, um, you know, different situations, but uh, consistency and longevity and, you know, resilience and all that's got to be a, uh, you make decisions after three or four games, you make big mistakes. <laughs> we're going to get in, got our teeth into the season and show what we're about and, you know, even collectively and, um, you know, those decisions will they'll fall into place. You know, there'll, there'll be some boys who have shown some soon. There'll be some others that will take a bit longer. There's some others at different ages that, you know, we need to say, hey, you, you know, you need to get through a bit more before we go sign and you're up for next year. That's just, that's how it is. Ben McNamara, how's mm -hmm. your shoulder? All right, um, yeah, all right. He would have been, excuse me, pardon me. He would have been back this week um, shoulder wise, he's AC. Um, he's just jarred his back in training yeah, on his return. So um, he's just not quite moving the way uh, he needs to. Um, otherwise, he, you know, he would have been there or thereabouts uh, for this week. But his shoulder is, um, it, you know, it, it's going to be okay from here on in. It's just getting back to, mat, um, to game fitness with his back. Is that a concern? Concern? You had a lengthy back injury last year. Didn't mm. you? Um, well, I hope not. I hope not. I hope it's not as lingering as, as what he's had in the past. Um, we're hopeful that it's not, um, but uh, you know, I can't be. I can't assure you of that at the moment. Um, we're hoping that it settles down and settles down quickly. We were under the impression till two days ago when he jarred it in the in the weights room that he was probably going to be fit and available for us this week. So hopefully Touchwood will be available for the Derby next week. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, I haven't been told otherwise, and it has improved since yesterday, but certainly not going to be OK for to take the risk on it for Saturday. It's been a big loss, Ben, I mean, if you start the season. He's, he's so composed for a young lad, plays the role of first receiver really well. And to rest, I don't think he gets the credit he deserves sometimes. Yeah, no, um, and he'll be pleased to hear that, and I agree with you. Um, you know, I think he does some really good things on the ball, and 
you know, I think he's, he gives some players some early ball, not just taking it to the line. And, you know, I think he's got a good awareness of when to do that. So, um, yeah, no, but, and, you know, he's, he's got a good knowledge of rugby league, you know, um, and that's handy too. So, um, but um, he'll be back soon, um, you know, hopefully fit and healthy. As for the academy, you mentioned obviously players pushing through. I've seen one already in David Litton, but obviously you've got some others in your first team, Charlie Severs, Kai Armstrong. Look at the academy, they're two from two, the reserves are two from two. The scholarship also won last week, and at that level it's not necessarily about winning, but it's nice to see the players coming through. Absolutely, I agree with that, yeah, I agree with that. Um, it's, it's good. Um, they have some influence about retention and contracts as well of, of, of the players who are off contract. There'll be some of those young boys who come along and are putting their hand up for those positions. So, absolutely. And I think that's really important that you do and that we all do, every club, producing some and bringing them through and as many as we can. Um, and locals, if we can, you know, get local boys to come through and we want the local competition to be healthy and domestic competition to be healthy. So, yeah, it's really important for us. It's... Um, they, we've got some good kids. I um, train them with us who have been promoted to training with us. I'd like to do some more soon as they earn it. Um, Michael Shenton um, helps me with that, you know, in, in terms of who's ready for it and uh, is it a bit too soon for a couple? You know, they need to still earn their stripes. So, and and there's, he gives me great advice about that. He knows what is expected of young players and... You know, his and my criteria aren't too far different. Um, there's a couple that have caught my eye that I've said to him, oh, I think he might come through. And he's gone, yes, I do too, but I, I think he needs to train a bit more with us before he steps up to the big boys. So we, we've got dialogue going all the time about the young guys coming through. It, it's just great. It's really positive. Obviously, you've done that yourself already, haven't you? Obviously, Zach Jameson came in over the winter. Obviously, like Sir Lewis Martin. Mm -hmm. Well, back at Coco, I think I'm perhaps sorry. Uh, obviously, you've seen them come into the team and, and made their mark in training every day. Absolutely, yeah. They've, they've improved. You know, I think Zach, as much as anybody, you know, anybody who watched him play um, last year, and, you know, he was raw and he still is raw, but, you know, his last outing in reserve grade, he was terrific, really good. And, uh, you know, he. I think being around the first team has accelerated his development. I could be wrong. You know, it could be he may have accelerate. He may be at, have been at the level that he is without being with the first team. But I doubt it. Uh, you know, he sits in all our meetings and he sits in all our previews and reviews. And you know, he come and sat in my office today to ask me a few questions about positional play of his positions. Um, he's not shy. He, he asks the smart questions and. He wants to learn and he's certainly got a physique um, of a good rugby league player, but he's got the brains for one too, you know. He's not shy to come to the head coach. He hasn't played first grade yet and he's coming to the head coach and asking me would I do video with him to help him understand his position better. Well, wow. <laughs> you, look, you like those kids, you know. You like those ones who want to, he's not sitting back waiting and being shy. He's, he's trying to knock the door down. Personally, I've seen that with a few. Kay Armstrong's one is just so energetic and it's infectious at times. That's all I do you use with Dave. <laughs> yeah. You do get that exuberance sometimes with you. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And they're the kids you want around. Oh, we'd like a whole number of them coming through at the same time if we can get a number of them. You know, I think that I think that was part of the the Leeds recipe some years ago. You know, when you can get a group of talent coming through at the same time, you can build a team around it. You know? well, I'm not saying that's where we're at at the moment, but we've got to have ambitions for that. You know, and uh, we've got some good young guys, get enough of them, and you start to develop a, a team around them, and you, you put a splattering of outsiders in, in on top of that, you know, or overseas players, or, you know, or marquee players, and, you know, you start to add to a really strong local team, you know, it, it can turn into something special. But, you know, that's a little, we've got a bit to go on that. Um, and that's, you know, that's our longer term focus. 
at the moment. You know, we've we've got to get our our group of players here performing to the levels that um, we're capable of and what we think we're capable of. So, um, but you're always you know jumping from one to the other. Fans, members, right now. Oh, listen, here and um, understand their their uh, hurt. <laughs> You know, and it does, it hurts. Um, um, anybody who supports the team and we want it better and we want better and we're trying to give better for the future. You know, it's, I wish it had a, um, been sooner and I wish it come earlier. I wish it, you know, for everybody's sake, um, players as well as our supporters, our owner, our, our board and, you know, and, and all associated, our juniors. We want them to be proud of what we're doing out there and we haven't achieved that yet. Um, and I mean, yeah, it's going to happen. We will get to that. You know, how long it takes, I was hoping it wouldn't take this long. Um, we're going to try and do it as soon as we can. We'll get on the improve, and uh, once we do, we'll keep on improving. And, you know, we would have liked to have done better already. But, um, you know, it's not always what you you wish for. Um, but it's, a, it's only going to happen for people who want to work hard. And I've got a group of players here at the moment who want to work hard, they want to have some of those tough dis, you know, discussions about things and we are still got hope in ourselves and as I've said previously, we need to prove some stuff to ourselves before we prove it to everybody else. We understand the hurt. Uh, we're going to try and stop the hurt as soon as we can, you know, for, for our supporters and, you know, if they can stick with us, it's, you know, that's great and uh, once you get through it, um, it makes it almost, uh, almost worth it, but uh, at the time it, it hurts a lot, we understand. Brilliant. Cheers,